Hi, I'm Sarah Baya and welcome to my science class. Welcome to another fun and interesting lesson this week. In this chapter, we will learn about the interactions among living things in the environment. In today's lesson, we will be describing some types of beneficial and harmful interactions among living things in the environment. At the end of our lesson, you are expected to describe the effects of interactions among living things, whether they are good or bad. But before we proceed with our main topic, let us review the different environmental conditions needed by organisms in order to survive in their environment. Complete the sentences by matching what the organism needs to the reason why they need it. So if you're ready, let's get started! If you answer them all correctly, congratulations! Our planet is inhabited by several millions of extremely diversified species. Plants, animals, and man are interconnected in this web of life. And we humans have the greater capacity to understand what is happening to our world. Let's be reminded of the countless environmental issues and problems our world right now. The way we see ourselves influences the way we interact with each other. Let's all be responsible. If we see ourselves as stewards of the earth, what a great world it would be. No man is an island. This saying is also true for organisms in an ecosystem. No organism exists in isolation. Individual organisms live together in an ecosystem and depend on one another. In fact, they have many different types of interactions with each other, and many of these interactions are critical for survival. Let's find out some interactions that exist among living things in the environment. Are they all good or are they bad interactions among organisms? Most reef-building corals contain algae that live in their tissue. The corals and algae have a mutualistic relationship. Corals are limestone deposits of tiny soft-bodied animals, while algae are small microscopic plants that live in water. The corals provide the algae with a protected environment and nutrients they need for photosynthesis. In return, the algae produce oxygen and help the coral to remove waste. The algae also provides energy for the corals to produce calcium needed for growth and productivity of coral reefs. In this relationship, both organisms benefit from each other. Ferns are epiphytes or air plants 
because they love to grow on other plants like tall trees. They have running rhizomes that creeps along the tree's branches with fronts sprouting along the way. Ferns gather their nutrition from dust and other organics that settle on the tree branch and their water is absorbed from the tree's surface and the humidity in the air. This relationship is called commensalism. The fern and its host tree results in the fern benefiting while the host is not affected at all. Parasitic infection or infestation can occur in children of all ages, infants, toddlers, and very young children in daycare settings are at risk for some types of parasitic diseases. Worms are parasites that lives inside the body and sucks the nutrients from its host. The child gets harmed or sick while the host benefits by feeding on the nutrients from the host's body. Parasites do not kill their host, but usually cause relative minor damage to their host. Some parasites also live outside the surface of the host. Parasitism is a relationship in which one organism benefits while the other organism is harmed. Another interesting relationship is between the spider and the fly. Flies usually get trapped on the spider's web and tries to escape before the spider attacks on it. The intruder becomes an easy free meal to the spider who tries to spin its web around the fly before eating it. The spider is the predator that hunts, catches, and eats the fly which is the prey. Often the prey gets attacked and eaten in the process. In this relationship, one benefits while the other is harmed or killed. Palae plant and grass belong to the same species of plants. Palae plants produce a starchy cereal grain, while grasses can grow in many places. Palae does not grow well when it has to compete with grass for the resources that it needs. Grass can grow fast and in abundance, resulting to poor growth and harvest of palae. Organisms may compete for food, sunshine, space, water, and other things that they need for survival. Each organism in this kind of relationship is called a competitor. Are you up for some challenge? Our challenge for today is to guess the type of relationship that exists in both organisms, whether it is beneficial or harmful. Study closely and choose wisely. So if you are ready to test your wits, let's get started!
If you answered them all correctly, congratulations! We have learned today that there are various interactions that exist among organisms. Some of these interactions may benefit both organisms while others are harmed or killed. This only shows that all living things depend on other living things in the environment. So that's it for our lesson today. Don't forget to read more about our lesson in your textbook and module and answer the activities in your worksheets. Once again, I'm your teacher, Sarah Baya. Thanks for listening. See you next time. That's all for today. See you next time.